We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. Good day and welcome to this virtual lecture entitled All About Telescopes. 
It is our desire to keep promoting the sciences, especially astronomy, to help educate the public by sharing astro and science related resources to help the people at least stay at home. Now, COVID-19 is here and it may be here for a while. And as we adapt to new ways of promoting the sciences, the Bedan Society of Young Astronomers would want our skills to put into good use to tackle problems coming up during this pandemic. So enjoy our live stream entitled All About Telescopes. And if you have any questions about the lecture, please feel free to message us below and we would glad to answer them. So enjoy and please like and share our uh, live stream event all about telescope and please like and share our facebook page the bed and society of young astronomers Uh, good day, uh, my dear netizens, ladies and gentlemen. So for today, we will be tackling the tools of the astronomer. And uh, one of the important tools of the modern astronomer is the telescope. Okay, the telescope is like an extension of the human eye. Okay, the human eye has its limitations. So the human eye cannot uh, observe or perceive very small objects. So that's why we need to extend our vision. Uh, we need an instrument like the microscope so that we can observe very small objects. And the human eye also cannot perceive very far or distant objects. So we need an extension of our eyes. So we need the telescope. Okay? And who invented the telescope? Now, it was not Galileo. Okay, many of you might think that it was uh, Galileo who invented the telescope. The telescope was invented by Hans Lippershey. Okay, he's a Dutch lens maker, Hans Lippershey. All right, so this was uh, his telescope. So his telescope uh, was made of uh, two lenses. Okay, place at opposite ends of this tube. Alright, so that was the uh, first telescope that Hans Lippershey uh, had made. Okay, then Galileo uh, got heard of uh, this uh, instrument made by Hans Lippershey. So he made one for himself. Okay, and uh, that was the telescope made by Galileo. Uh, it's similar to Hans Lippershey, but uh, his telescope was far more powerful than Hans Lippershey. Okay, his telescope can magnify up to 30 times. And what's good about uh, his telescope is that Galileo pointed his telescope towards the night sky. Okay, and uh, with his telescope, he discovered... Uh, the four largest moons of Jupiter, which we now call as the Galilean moons. Uh, Galileo also observed the uh, craters of the moon. You know, before, uh, the people thought that the moon was just a uh, smooth uh, white uh, ball, crystal ball. But when Galileo pointed his telescope towards the moon, Galileo saw craters. Galileo saw plains and mountains, okay? And Galileo also observed Venus. And uh, he noticed through his telescope that Venus changes shape or faces, much like our moon, okay? And uh, with this observation, it supported the uh, Copernican model of the solar system, okay? 
Right now, everybody turn to the uh, diagram. So this was the uh, telescope that Galileo had assembled. So it's composed of a uh, double convex lens. That's the uh, objective lens of his telescope. And the eyepiece was a double concave lens. All right, so this is the uh, Galilean telescope that uh, he assembled. All right, advantages. Uh, the final image is erect or upright, and it is useful for terrestrial observations. All right, now uh, one disadvantage of the Galilean telescope is that it has a small field of view. Uh, later, we shall discuss what field of view is. All right. Okay, so this was the uh, Galilean telescope that uh, Galileo Galilei assembled. All right, and uh, turn to this uh, diagram. Johannes Kepler also designed a telescope. Uh, his telescope was composed of a double convex lens as the objective lens. And look at the eyepiece. The eyepiece is also a double convex lens, unlike that of Galileo's telescope. Okay, the advantage of the uh, Keplerian telescope is that it has a wider field of view. Alright. Okay, so what are the different types of telescopes? Okay, first we have what we call a refracting telescope. Okay, a refracting telescope is a telescope that uses lenses okay, to bend or to refract light okay so like the one made by galileo and hans lieber she okay the galilean telescope and even the telescope assembled by johannes kepler they're all refracting telescope that uses lenses to produce a magnified image of the distant object okay so my dear netizens here is the uh, basic design of a refracting telescope okay this is similar to the keplerian uh, design so we have here the objective lens the objective lens is a double convex lens that uh, collects incoming light okay and um, the objective lens produces an initial uh, magnified image then the initial magnified image is further enlarged by the eyepiece the eyepiece lens. The eyepiece lens is also a double convex lens. Okay? So that's the basic design of the refracting telescope. Alright? So here is a modern uh, refracting telescope used by many amateur astronomers, including me. And so I think ginagamit ko din. Meron akong ganyan na uh, refracting telescope. Okay, so this type of telescope is uh, a refracting telescope. So a refracting telescope uses lenses to produce a magnified image of the distant object. So there are two major lenses here. We have here the objective lens. Okay, the objective lens collects the light from the distant object. And at the opposite end of the telescope tube is the eyepiece lens. Okay, so this telescope is similar to the one made by Hans Lippershey, by Galileo, and by Johannes Kepler. So, and this telescope is mounted on an altasimuth mount or altasimuthal mount. So in this type of mount, there are two movements. So we have the left and right movement like so and the up and down movement so this type of mount is called an altasimuth or altasimuthal mount okay so advantages of this telescope yeah this telescope is rigid sturdy uh, you don't need to uh, align the lenses and um, it's quite good the only disadvantage of this type of telescope is that this telescope uh, produces color fringes or the refracting telescope suffers from what we call chromatic aberration. 
But uh, again, um, modern refracting telescopes now have correcting lenses that eliminates chromatic aberration or minimizes chromatic aberration. All right, so again, we have here the uh, finder scope. So this finder scope allows you to locate your target. Okay, so this is a um, refracting telescope. Okay, so the largest refracting telescope is in the United States. It's in the Yerkes Observatory. Okay, the Yerkes Observatory was built in the late 1890s in Wisconsin. It houses the world's largest refracting telescope. Okay, the uh, 77 uh, acre facility in Williams Bay, Wisconsin, that houses the 40 inch, okay, that's 100 centimeter telescope, which is the largest refracting telescope ever built. And hanggang ngayon, hindi pa yan na, ano, na higitan. That's still the largest refracting telescope. It is the Yerkes Telescope at Yerkes Observatory in Wisconsin. Okay, here's the Yerkes Observatory, and inside is the Yerkes Telescope. So, my dear netizens, this is the largest refracting telescope in the world. It has a 40-inch uh, objective lens. Okay? Ayan, malaki yan. See? Fantastic. Okay, so that's the Yerkes Telescope. That's the largest refracting telescope. Okay, now disadvantages of the refracting telescope. The uh, refracting telescope suffers from chromatic aberration. Okay, so when you say chromatic aberration, um, the lenses produces some um, color fringes. Okay, uh, something like this. So, when you look at the uh, distant object, you will see some blue, green, or red color fringes in the final image. And that's not good. Okay, hindi magandang tignan yung final image with all of these color fringes. So, many refracting telescopes suffer from chromatic aberration. But there are modern refracting telescopes that can correct such... Uh, defect okay by using uh, additional lenses to minimize chromatic aberration okay ayan so when you look at the image there are color fringes mga red blue and color fringes okay this is mars and look at the image of mars medyo hindi maganda there are color fringes so, the invention of achromatic lenses uh, correct this uh, defect. Okay, achromatic lenses uh, corrects chromatic aberration. Yan. Okay, so additional lenses are uh, installed to minimize these color fringes. Okay, uh, the second type of telescope is called the reflecting telescope. The reflecting telescope uses mirrors, okay? Uh, the reflecting telescope reflects light of a concave mirror, okay, that uh, focuses the image and eventually produces the uh, desired magnified image of the distant object. Okay, the reflecting telescope was uh, designed by Isaac Newton, and this was the first Reflecting telescope designed by Isaac Newton. Okay, hi. So this is Astronomy at Home, and I will be explaining how this thing works. So this is what we call a reflecting telescope. Okay, by the name itself, reflecting, this telescope uses mirrors to capture the light of a distant object. Uh, this telescope was designed by no other than Sir Isaac Newton himself. Okay, so inside the telescope tube is a concave mirror. So as you can see here, alright, so inside there is a concave mirror that collects the light, let's say of a distant object, say the moon or a star or a planet. Then the collected light is bounced off 
uh, a secondary mirror there's a secondary mirror near the top of the the telescope tube and it is reflected onto this eyepiece so if you look at the eyepiece uh, the image is magnified okay what we have here also is a finder scope that uh, allows you to locate your target uh, the telescope is mounted in an equatorial mount so uh, the equatorial mount is polar aligned meaning that it's it is pointing at the north star but anyway uh, i will explain further the the use of the equatorial mount advantages of this reflecting telescope well it eliminates color fringes or chromatic aberration and it is cheaper than the refracting telescope which i will explain later okay okay let me give you now a guided tour of the basic parts of this telescope so this is the uh, telescope tube right uh, this telescope is a reflecting telescope reflecting because this telescope uses mirrors to produce a magnified image so inside the telescope tube is the primary mirror you can see the primary mirror below the telescope tube the primary mirror is a concave or spherical mirror see that and near the top of the telescope tube is a secondary flat mirror there so the primary mirror collects the light from the distant object uh, and it brings it into a focal point then the flat mirror reflects the uh, initial image onto this eyepiece okay that's your eyepiece uh, this design was uh, made by Isaac Newton so this is what we call a Newtonian reflecting telescope all right so we have here the focusing knob and we have here the uh, finder scope the finder scope allows you to locate your target object okay then below here we have two knobs this is the declination knob and this knob right here is the right ascension knob then we have here the counterweights so it allows you to balance your telescope and we have here the mount and tripod the mount is called an equatorial mount anyway we will uh, explain later how the equatorial mount works okay so those are the basic parts of this telescope reflecting telescope okay so that's your reflecting telescope now one advantage of the reflecting telescope is that it eliminates chromatic aberration okay or those color fringes that i mentioned a while ago so a reflecting telescope gives you a much clearer and sharper image as compared to a refractor uh, but again the refractor also has its advantages and disadvantages all right okay now the largest reflecting telescope uh, is located in spain now as of 2013 the largest reflecting telescope in the world is the grand telescopio canarias which is located in las palmas spain the uh, objective mirror okay has a diameter of about 34.2 feet ang laki okay or 10.4 meters that's the uh, objective mirror the concave mirror okay uh, the diameter is 34.2 feet so ang laki niyan so this is the uh, observatory that houses the uh, largest reflecting telescope in the world the grand telescopio canarias okay and that's the uh, largest reflecting telescope in the world Ayan. so that's the uh, primary mirror or the objective mirror 
which has a diameter of about uh, 10 meters. Okay, 10.4 meters. Ang laki, di ba? Laki. Lang telescope na ito. Alright, so that's the Grand Telescopio Canarias. Also, um, in Hawaii, uh, there is also the Keck Telescope. Malaki rin ito. The Keck Telescope. So, here's the uh, Keck Telescope. And, we look at the primary mirror or the objective mirror. So, it's similar to the Grand Telescopio Canaris. Yan lang mas malaki yun sa Spain. Okay, uh, look at the size of the primary mirror. Okay, may mga segments. Diba? Okay, and this is the Hale Telescope. And so the uh, primary mirror has a diameter of about 200 inches. And a 200 inch mirror. Okay, so that's the uh, Hale Telescope. Here in the Philippines, uh, we have the Pag-asa Astronomical Observatory in UP Diliman. Okay, in fact, that's the largest uh, reflecting telescope here in the Philippines. It is located at the Pag-asa Astronomical Observatory. Okay, so that's the reflecting telescope. Uh, here is the reflecting telescope at UP Nismed. Ito na, nagamit ko to once. Okay, pero ang madalas gumamit nito is si Sir Edmond Rosales. Ayan, that's him, the photo. Okay, this is the second largest reflecting telescope in the Philippines. The largest is at Pag-asa. Ang difference lang nila, mga centimeters lang. Okay? Okay, this type of telescope is what we call a catadioptric telescope. Okay, catadioptric, that means that it is a combination of both refractive and reflective elements. Now, in front of the telescope is a correcting lens. This correcting lens uh, minimizes or corrects any color fringes or chromatic aberration. Then at the back of the telescope is the primary mirror. Then there's a secondary flat mirror. So, it's similar to the Newtonian telescope. But the only difference is that in front of this telescope is a correcting lens. So it is a combination of both refractive and reflective uh, elements. So we call this a catadioptric uh, telescope. Okay, so let us now study the uh, so-called equatorial mount. So this reflecting telescope is mounted in what we call an equatorial mount. This is quite different from the altasimultal mount of uh, the refracting telescope, the one that I mentioned a while ago. So, if you will notice, this uh, part of the mount must be pointed at the polar star. The polar star is Polaris. So, we, we must look at the north. We must find first north using this uh, digital compass so if we find north then this uh, part of the equatorial mount should be pointed north and uh, this part is tilted at about 15 degrees from the horizontal in fact the north star or polaris is 15 degrees above the horizon or 14.2 something degrees above the horizon okay now you will notice that in the equatorial mount there are two knobs here we have this is what we call the declination knob and this is the right ascension knob so if your mount is polar aligned and if you were able to find your target all you need to adjust is the right ascension knob Okay, right ascension because if you will use your body, your front here is north, the back is south, your right hand here is east, and uh, the sun, the moon, and the planets, they all rise east, uh, eastward. So, right ascension. So, the moon and the planets, they ascend eastward. So, 
right ascension. So if everything is polar aligned, then all you need to adjust is the right ascension knob. And this uh, mount is very good for astrophotography. And if you have a, a motor, motorized uh, thing, you can attach it here and it will all be automatic. So that's the advantage of the equatorial mount uh, in contrast to the altasimutal mount. Okay. Alright, so at this point, let us now uh, tackle a very important uh, component of the telescope, which is the eyepiece. Now, your telescope is as good as your eyepiece. Okay, the eyepiece can greatly improve the uh, capability of your telescope. Now, I am here... Um, my own eyepiece now the uh, workhorse of amateur astronomy is this eyepiece called plosil okay plosil and uh, the eyepiece that i'm holding has uh, a focal length of about 15 mm okay i have here 15 mm eyepiece plosil eyepiece Okay, alright, so I have here also uh, another eyepiece, Plossil, but it has a focal length of 20 mm. Okay, so 20 mm and 15 mm. Okay, so, oh, baka tanong yan, ano mas maganda, 15 or 20 mm? Well, it depends. So, if you want uh, your image to be magnified, then I suggest you use a 15mm eyepiece. Okay, meron pa mga eyepiece na lower than 15. Okay, may 10mm, uh, you have 5mm. So, as you lower the focal length of the eyepiece, you actually increase the magnification of the image. Okay? So, um, between 20 and 15 mm, uh, which eyepiece would give you a greater magnification? Oh, what do you think? Alright, so you got it. It's the 15 mm. Okay? But uh, the uh, disadvantage of using an eyepiece with a lower focal length is that it also uh, decreases the field of view okay so what is the field of view so can you see this and yung lens so pag sumilip tayo dun sa lens na yan may circular area okay and that circular area is your field of view all right so as you lower the focal length let's say the to 10 mm well, this is a 15 mm eyepiece so 10, 5 mm. Yes, you increase the magnification, but you also decrease the field of view. Right? And in amateur astronomy, ayaw natin yung maliit yung field of view. We want to have a much larger field of view. Para kitang kita. Malawak. Okay? Now, using this 20 mm eyepiece would do just that. Medyo malaki yung field of view neto. But uh, of lesser magnification compared to 15 mm. So, depende. So, sir, ano bang gagamitin natin? 15 or 20? Depende sa gusto ninyo. So, if you want a wider field of view, kanya, sisilip kayo sa buwan, but you want to photograph the moon with a wide field of view, Ayun, eto. You can use the 20 mm eyepiece. Okay? Uh, if you want to photograph the moon with more detail, then I suggest you use a 15 mm eyepiece. Okay? Uh, this is uh, Plossil. This is the uh, workhorse of amateur astronomy. Ito yung madalas gamitin ng mga amateur astronomers. Okay, the Plossil eyepiece. Alright? Okay. Now, 
uh, an important accessory that amateur astronomers must have is this one. Alright, this is called a Barlow lens. Okay, so what is a Barlow lens? A Barlow lens is a tele-negative amplifier. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Now, the lens here is a diverging lens. So, ano siya? Concave. Concave lens. So, what it does is it increases the uh, focal length of your telescope. So, if your focal length uh, is increased, then that is translated to a higher magnification. So, uh, what a Barlow lens does is it increases the magnification of your image. Though, ang ginagawa niya lang niya talaga is increasing the focal length of the telescope. Okay? So, you get your usual eyepiece, okay? And you insert the eyepiece onto the Barlow lens, like so. And you insert the Barlow lens with the eyepiece to the focuser of your telescope. Alright? Now, the Barlow lens is essential, especially in observing planets. Okay? Like, uh, if you want to observe Jupiter with the Galilean moons or the rings of Saturn, then I suggest you make use of a Barlow lens. Okay? So, the Barlow lens increases the focal length and that is translated to a higher magnification. Okay, so this is a, a very important accessory for amateur astronomers. The Barlow lens. Okay. Now, a special type of eyepiece which is optional for the amateur astronomer is a zoom eyepiece. Okay, so this eyepiece that I'm holding is called a zoom eyepiece. Now, if you will look closely at the numbers etched in the eyepiece, so you have the numbers 8 to 24 mm. Okay, so what does that mean? Now, a zoom eyepiece will allow you to change the uh, focal length of your eyepiece. So, between 8 to 24 mm. Okay, so what's the implication of that? So, by changing the focal length of your eyepiece, you can actually change the magnification of your telescope. Now, we know for a fact that uh, an eyepiece with a lower focal length is translated to a higher magnification. So, if your eyepiece has a focal length of 8 mm, that would give you a higher magnification compared to an eyepiece with a 24 mm focal length. Okay? Now, this zoom eyepiece will allow you to shift or to change the focal length. So, let's say uh, in this eyepiece you are set to 24 mm. And if you want to increase the image, the magnification of the image, then you can just turn the eyepiece like so and shift to 8 mm by just turning the eyepiece. Okay? So, by shifting the uh, focal length from 24 to 8 mm, um, the magnification of your image would increase. See? So, that's what a zoom eyepiece does. So, what's the advantage of this? So, this means that you don't need to change eyepieces from time to time. Okay? So, let's say, gusto nyo palitan yung magnification. So, magpapalit pa kayo ng eyepiece, di ba? From a uh, 20 mm eyepiece, magpapalit kayo to 8 mm eyepiece. So, that's quite tedious. Mabusisi po. But if you have a zoom eyepiece, you can just turn the eyepiece like so. And you change the focal length from 24 to 8 or vice versa from 8 to 24. So, isa lang yung eyepiece ninyo but you can shift the focal length. 
So, para na rin kayong may mga eyepieces. Okay? So, nakatipid pa kayo. Right? So, that's the advantage of having a zoom eyepiece. And the uh, field of view of a zoom eyepiece is much larger. Like, uh, if you are in the 24mm focal length, mas, ano siya, mas malaki yung field of view as compared to a regular plosil eyepiece with the same focal length. Alright? So, this is a zoom eyepiece. Anyway, this is just optional for the amateur astronomer. So, it's up to you if you want uh, one eyepiece and you can change the focal length or you can have several eyepieces with different focal lengths. So, that's up to the astronomer. Alright, anyway, this is the uh, zoom eyepiece. Now, aside from the refracting and the reflecting telescope, uh, there are other types of telescopes used by the astronomer. And one such telescope is called a radio telescope. Now, a radio telescope focuses the uh, incoming radio waves on an antenna, okay, which, just like a radio antenna, absorbs and transmits these waves to an amplifier. So, basically, what a radio telescope does is it collects radio waves from deep space, okay? As compared to the refracting and the reflecting telescopes that collects light, a radio telescope collects radio waves, okay, using this huge antenna, all right? So, here is a diagram on how a radio telescope works. So, a radio telescope is uh, composed of a huge dish antenna. Parang, ano, parang satellite dish. Okay? Pero ito malaki. Okay? And uh, this huge dish antenna, they collect radio waves from deep space. Okay? Then the weak radio signals are then uh, received by an amplifier. Then, the amplified radio signals are then uh, brought to a computer for analysis. Okay? So, instead of collecting light, a radio telescope collects radio waves. Okay? Alright, and uh, this radio telescope is the second largest radio telescope in the world. This is the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico. This is used by SETI in the search for extraterrestrial life. SETI is the acronym for search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Okay, second lang yan. The largest radio telescope is in China. Okay? Alright, so... In this case, you have several dish uh, antenna that uh, receives signals para malawak yung, yung range ng radio telescope. Okay? So, you have an array of radio antennae that can receive and collect signals from deep space. Okay? Alright, so radio telescopes are much less affected by turbulence in the atmosphere, clouds, and weather. Unlike the uh, refracting and the reflecting telescopes, okay, uh, using those telescopes, so we are at the mercy of the weather. So, pag maulap, wala na. Diba? Pag umuulan, wala na rin. You can't use the uh, refracting or the reflecting telescope. So... Uh, you know, in amateur astronomy, we are at the mercy of the weather. Pero itong radio telescopes, no. So, they are not affected by turbulence in the atmosphere, clouds, and the weather. So, radio telescopes can see through interstellar dust clouds that obscure visible wavelengths. So, kaya nilang ipenetrate yan. Okay? All right. Now, another type of telescope is what we call the space telescopes. Space telescopes orbit above the Earth's atmosphere, okay, and thus produce clearer images as compared to Earth-based telescopes. 
So, they are not affected by the weather kasi nasa taas na sila ng Earth's atmosphere. They orbit the, the Earth. Okay, and the first space telescope is the Hubble Space Telescope. Okay, built by NASA. The Hubble Space Telescope was, was put into orbit uh, in April of 1990. Okay, so ito yung Hubble Space Telescope. Okay. Uh, other space telescopes would include the Chandra X-ray Observatory and we also have the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory. And in 2011, um, NASA plans to launch the James Webb Space Telescope. Okay? And that's a James Webb Telescope. This is the Chandra X-ray Telescope. And the uh, Kepler Space Telescope. I'm sure you're familiar with the Kepler Space Telescope. Uh, the main objective of the Kepler Space Telescope is to search for exoplanets. And that's what the Kepler Telescope did. The Kepler Telescope had discovered thousands of these exoplanets. Okay, so we are now uh, beginning the search for planets outside our solar system and the possibility of life in one of those exoplanets. All right. Okay, so those are the different types of telescopes used in astronomy. Okay, well, I hope you have learned uh, much about our discussion today about the telescope. Okay, so again, thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. And please don't forget to check out our Facebook page, the Bedan Society of Young Astronomers. Okay, ito, dito yan, Bedan Society of Young Astronomers. Okay, and we will have more of this virtual astronomy lectures in the near future. Okay, so in behalf of the officers and crew of BSYA, and also in behalf of the uh, administrators of San Beda University Senior High School, this is Professor June Cahigal saying, live long and prosper, and I'll see you next time, virtually that is. Stay safe everybody. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone.
choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone. Hello, so hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome now to this uh, live question and answer portion of uh, the lecture that you have uh, seen a while ago. So it's all about telescopes. Okay, so I have my uh, president, uh, GC Cascolan, who will assist us in uh, our q and a portion yes that will answer, sir. okay so uh, before the question and answer would like to thank those who have uh, uh, watch our virtual lecture about telescopes. Uh, it is really unfortunate that uh, we cannot do public telescope viewings. Um, we really need that uh, vaccine. Sana magkaroon na po ng vaccine matapos na itong pandemia so that we can go back to our normal lives. Okay, talagang ma malaki ang pinsala netong COVID-19 virus na ito. Especially um, in promoting the sciences, especially astronomy. But the, the pandemic will not stop us from, from studying the sciences, right? So sa lahat ng mga sudyante na nakikinig dyan, so uh, we will have to do our activities virtually. Okay? So lectures and even telescope viewings. So we will have our virtual, virtual telescope viewings uh, in the near future. Okay. So, GC, uh, take it away. Greet our viewers. Okay. So, I guess uh, GC is having some technical difficulties. 
Okay, so probably I'll just uh, mention some frequently asked questions about telescopes. All right, so what's uh, the difference between a refractor and a reflecting telescope? So uh, I think I mentioned that in my lecture a while ago. So what I have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a refracting telescope. Yeah, malit lang to. Uh, nakita ko lang to sa isang surplus Japan surplus uh, store uh, several months back. And a refractor telescope, a refractor uses lenses. Eh, nakikita nyo, may lens. So the lens collects light and bends it and produces a magnified image here in the eyes. Okay. Now, a reflecting telescope Wala akong mapakita ang reflecting telescope. It uses mirrors to collect light. Okay, so inside the telescope, there's a concave mirror that collects the light, brings it into a focal point, and the eyepiece uh, further magnifies the image. Okay, so baka tanongin niya, alam mas maganda, a refractor or a reflecting telescope? So, each telescope has its own advantages and disadvantages. Like ito, uh, this telescope is sturdy. Kahit ugay-ugay nyo ito, it, the lenses will not misalign. Okay, but in a reflector, hindi. Kung lagay mo sa kotse yung reflecting telescope nyo, pag nalubak kayo, uh, the, the mirrors might be misaligned. So, what I do before I start my observations, is that I do collimation of the mirrors. Ina-align ko muna yung mga mirrors. But that's another story, uh, collimating your reflecting telescope. Okay? Um, another disadvantage of a refractor is that a refractor suffers from chromatic aberration. I think I mentioned that in my lecture. Okay? A refracting telescope like this produces color fringes or chromatic aberration. But in modern refractors, there are co correcting lenses or achromatic lenses that minimizes chromatic aberration. A reflecting telescope uh, doesn't suffer from the defect. A reflecting telescope eliminates chromatic aberration. Okay? All right. So, uh, baka another frequently asked question about the telescope. Ano being mas mura? A refractor or a reflector? Okay, well, it depends on the brand. But uh, generally, a refractor is more expensive than a reflector. Okay, yung mga malalaking refractors, um, they would cost more than a reflecting telescope. Kasi nga yung lenses, yung lenses yung medyo mahal. Okay? All right. Okay. So, is GC around? Nandiyan na ba si Mr. Cascolan? Okay. So, while we're waiting, let's just continue with this frequently asked questions about the telescope. Now, babaka tanongin ninyo, Sir, saan ba ho nakakabili ng telescope dito sa Pilipinas? Okay, now, there is a pretty good store um, here in Metro Manila. The store is called Cutting Edge. Okay, so there's one branch at SM Mall of Asia. Okay, and I think there's one at Shangri-La, I think. Okay, so that's a good store if you want to buy uh, branded telescopes like Celestron, or mid, then you go to cutting edge. Okay, but uh, most of my telescopes, uh, they were brought lang sa, ano, sa mga surplus, Japan surplus uh, shops. Okay? Kasi medyo may kamahalan yung mga telescopes. So, ang ginagawa ko, this is a, uh, from my personal experience, so bumibila ako ng mga um, uh, damage, telescopes. Then, inaayos ko po sila. Nini-refurbish ko. Paint it. Inaayos ko yung mirrors. Basta hindi basag yung mirrors. 
Oo, oh, inaayos ko yung mga lenses. Pinepaint ko yung telescope tube. And, yan, ayos na. Parang bagong-bago yung mga telescopes ko. Okay? Wala akong brand new na telescope po, ladies and gentlemen. Lahat po ng mga telescopes ko were brought sa mga Japan surplus shops. My first telescope, if you would, uh, you, you would be amazed. My, te- my first telescope is a uh, reflecting telescope. And that telescope I bought only for, guess what? 1,000 pesos only. Yes. I bought that telescope only for 1,000 bucks. See? Then, ginawa ko, ay inayos ko, I painted the body tube. I aligned the mirrors, nilinis ko, uh, inayos ko yung uh, equatorial mount niya, and I am using that telescope now in, in our free telescope viewings. I call that telescope Mizar, Mizar 1. Yan. Okay? Then, uh, meron pa akong nabili na telescope sa Japan Surplus. Talagang maraming dents, kalawang na, it's a refractor, malaki siya. Uh, the objective lens is about 150mm. Medyo malaki, malaki to. So inayos ko po siya, uh, inayos ko yung mount, and I'm using it in my free telescope viewings. And I call the telescope Hulk. Kasi ito yung pinakamalaking refractor ko, the Hulk. Usually, I give my telescope names. And Mizar. Then, I bought a telescope called Skywalker. Kasi Skywalker yung brand. I bought it only for 5,000 pesos. Yun, 5,000 lang po. So, inayos ko din yung mga mirrors. Inayos ko yung mount. Pininturahan ko. And, lo and behold, yung telescope na ako. Alright? So, ganun lang po. Discarte lang po sa buhay. Kasi, hindi naman ako makakabili ng brand new na telescope po. Hindi naman ako ganun kaya naman. <laughs> okay. So, that's it. Alright. Uh, what about eyepieces? Ito, medyo kailangan to na investment in amateur astronomy. Ito yung mga eyepieces. Okay. So, I think I mentioned that in my lecture. About I- the eyepiece really improves the performance of your telescope. Kahit po yung telescope ninyo ay binili lang po sa Japan Surplus. Kahit hindi yan branded na telescope like Celestron or Mid. Pero pag maganda po ang eyepiece ninyo, if your eyepiece is really performing well, then your telescope would be 101% effective or efficient. Yan po. Your eyepiece really improves the performance of your telescope. And uh, the best eyepiece that I can recommend is the Plosil eyepiece. Ito po talagang maganda po ito. It gives you very good resolution of the image, uh, wide field of view. Maganda po ang Plosil. This is the workhorse of amateur astronomy. Okay? Uh, if you have an eyepiece like this, ito po. So you can see may tatak na letter H. Yan, H. Uh, the letter H stands for Huygens. Okay? From uh, the amateur astronomer Christian Huygens. Alright? So dati, uso po ito. But now, uh, hindi na ito maganda po. Um, I do not recommend... Uh, you using this eyepiece na may letter H, uh, Huygens. Okay, obsolete na po ito. Uh, and also, the field of view is really narrow. Okay, I do not recommend this type of eyepiece for your telescopic observations. Ito po talaga, you need to invest. So, nakamura po ako sa telescope, pero uh, these uh, eyepieces, they worth a fortune. <laughs> pero ganun po talaga. If you are really into this hobby, then you should invest for good eyepieces. Okay, here's another eyepiece that I bought. Medyo mahal po ito. Kaya iniingatan ko po ito. This is um, 
a wide field uh, eyepiece. 19mm po siya, pero malaki po yung field of view. This is good for astrophotography. Okay, ito po. This is a wide uh, field uh, eyepiece. Okay. And I think I mentioned this also in my lecture. Ito po yung natawag natin na uh, zoom eyepiece. Okay? So, I mentioned in my lecture that if you want to increase the magnification, then you choose an eyepiece at the lower focal length. Okay? So, mabusisi po, palit ng palit po tayo ng eyepieces. But with a zoom eyepiece, pag ito lang, just turn on, uh, turn this on, yan. Turn nyo lang siya, and you will increase or decrease the focal length. So, hindi na kayo kailangan magpalit-palit ng mga eyepiece. So, you have just one eyepiece. Nakatipid pa po kayo. Alright? So, anyway, this is just optional for the amateur astronomer. The zoom eyepiece. Okay? Alright. So, I guess uh, that's it. So, marami pong salamat po sa mga nanood. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this uh, virtual lecture. Uh, I can see many of you uh, had comments. So, siguro, uh, we'll just uh, answer those uh, questions po uh, in the replay. Pag uh, nag-replay po tayo. Okay? Alright, so thank you po. And uh, next Saturday, next Saturday, please stay tuned. We have a very good virtual lecture this coming Saturday, August 15. It's all about the secrets of isn't it exciting? So we will uh we will have a live stream event again this coming Saturday, August 15. So check that out. Mark that in your calendar, netizens. The secrets of Mars. Okay. All right. So all right, so to give you a preview of uh, that upcoming uh, virtual lecture on the secrets of Mars, let's watch this video about the secrets of Mars. I, I think th there, there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. One, one, one path is we stay on Earth forever. Um, and then there will be some eventual extinction event. Um, I, I don't have an immediate doomsday prophecy, but there's, it's eventually history suggests there will be some, some doomsday event. Uh, the alternative is to become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species, which uh, I hope you would agree that is the right way to go. Okay, so that's just a preview of our virtual lecture this next Saturday, August 15. So please mark that in your calendar. Next uh, Saturday, 
we will have another virtual lecture entitled The Secret of Marx. Okay, and we will be featuring here the latest from the Perseverance Rover. All right. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like and share our Facebook page, my dear netizens. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please like and share our Facebook page, the Pedan Society of Young Astronomers. Again, our advocacy is to promote the sciences, not only astronomy, but the sciences. So I encourage all the students out there to continue to watch our live stream events in the future. Okay? So in behalf of uh, the officers and crew of the Bell and Society of Young Astronomers to my uh, co-host, uh, the um, incoming president, uh, Mr. G.C. Cascolan, my technical uh, committee headed by Mr. Kuz Pakulanan, and all the members of BSYA. Also, for uh, a thank you for the administrators of San Bed uh, University Senior High School. Thank you very much for your never-ending support for this organization. This is June Kahigal saying, live long and prosper. And I will see you next week, next Saturday, for The Secrets of Mars. Thank you and stay safe, everybody.